Right, well, good, uh, not good morning, because it's not morning, is it really? It's afternoon, still recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Virtual Flower Show and day two of our Q&A session with our experts that we've got with us. These are exhibitors that exhibit at all the flower shows. They're all gold medal winners. They're experts in their field. So in no particular order, we've got Lynn Dibley from Dibley's Nursery, specialist Hello. in Streptocarpus. Hi there, Lynn. We've got Vicky Fox there from Plantagogo, um, Hookahs, Hookahellas and Tyrellas. We've got Rosie Hardy from Hardy's Cottage Garden. Hello. Down there in Hampshire. Matt Soper also down there in Hampshire from Hampshire carnivorous plants with things that eat you if you get too close. We've got Mark Lynham, who is our Delphinium expert from the Delphinium Society and Chelsea exhibitor, and Alec White from Primrose Hall Peonies, who grows a fantastic range of peonies. So we've got all the expertise there. We've got questions which you very kindly have sent in to us, so we'll get on with this straight away. Um, so um, the first one is from D. Uh, Gemmel, and it's about a bleeding heart. I think it's not her heart, it's the flower she's talking about. <laughs> she wants to know if she can, I mean, we do do a, an agony art column later on if you want to get back in touch, but can I divide this plant and how and when is it best to do it? So bleeding heart used to be called Dicentra, now it's called Lamprocapnus. So um, Hardy, is this one that you grow? Uh, it might just be me, might it? Yes. Yeah. So Dicentra spectabili, the true uh, red and uh, white form of the bleeding heart, as a lot of people know it, uh, is now Lamprocapnos spectabili. Changed its name quite a few years ago. People don't like the new names. No. Don't blame them. It can stay whatever you want to call it in your garden. I don't care. It's just when you're looking for it online, you need the new names. Um, so yes, it is a plant that is divisible. It should really be done very early in the spring. So when it is just starting to appear, it's something that has very, very fleshy roots. And if you go and divide that in the autumn, it tends to rot off. So springtime, usually middle of March is probably about the best time. It's just starting to show some signs of life split it then and then because it's actively growing anything that you break in the way of roots or you happen to cut a bit of root will heal very very quickly and it will get away and grow nicely from then onwards you can also if you don't get time to split it then split it uh, after it has finished flowering um, because otherwise while it's in the middle of flowering it really doesn't appreciate it uh, so good thing to do so two times Everyone, well, before all this lockdown, we all had busy lives and we sort of missed things. But the, you know, now we're on, on this horrible um, situation. Most people have got time to go in their garden, see what their plants are doing. So wait until it's finished flowering. If you haven't split it already, split it then. Okay, and that's normally sort of around end of May, June time, because then it they die down early, June, don't they? And, and you've got to be careful with the weather, of course, because if you're splitting it, it's in full leaf and it's got a lot of root there, it's going to need a lot more water and you're going to have to water it very wisely. That does not mean taking the hose pipe out and giving it a splash. It means taking a full can of water or a bucket of water and giving it a bucket of water a day and that way you get the correct amount of water into the plant there you go d now you've been told now by rosie a book it a day right uh, we've got a question on tulips then this is from susan uh, susan dyer why are my tulips not flowering they only have leaves and only one has flowered otherwise they look very healthy so any ideas why the tulips aren't flowering they're usually only a one season plant aren't they well, they say that, don't they? But I had this conversation with somebody the other day that's had them in, in fact, it was a nursery, that's had them in their garden for years and they always sell them and say, you know, because the, yeah. the Dutch tell us that they're one season, but yeah, they, they will come back. But I wonder if we don't know where these are growing, do we? And we don't know whether these are new, but I agree with Rosie. They don't flower as well in second and third years normally. Um, they're not like a... Sorry, Vicky. Sorry, no, I interrupted. Did um, did she cut the foliage off last year? As we well? don't know because they come we back a week, don't they? If you don't let them die yeah. back into the bowl, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> they, they don't multiply like a daffodil, do they? Because daffodils mm. produce lots of daughter bulbs around and make a bigger clump, but you get the one main bulb with a tulip, and then they do do little offshoots, but they often take a year or two to get to flowering size. So it, it might be that they are um, just 
it, it's worth giving them a go. I would say give them water and feed now, especially if your soil's dry, Susan. Uh, build them up. Just give them a, a good liquid feed when you water them so that during the next month, the foliage can at least try and put some energy back down into those little bulbs. Um, and then you can always lift them when the foliage has died down and, and split them up a little bit because if they get crowded, that can stop it. But uh, I think Rose is right. If you buy new bulbs, they always flower best mm -hmm. in the first year. So time to get your order in now. Make sure you get the pick <laughs> of the bulbs, isn't it? So, right. OK, this is a tree peony one, though. So for you, Alec, uh, Catherine Rains. Um, I live on a north face in Scottish hillside. Uh, and although this means I shouldn't be able to grow much, I've been successful with roses and for the first time my pins have actually got buds on them. I've got several hours of sun a day and was wondering whether a tree peony would survive. So I suspect it's the herbaceous peony that's flowering. She mm -hmm. wants to know whether a tree peony will survive on a, a north face in Scottish hillside. Well, your tree peony is certainly uh, hardy enough to do that. Um, whether you'll get much in the way of flowers is another matter if it's really exposed the big flowers on the tree peony tend to get blown away and shattered really quickly so probably i'd recommend something a little bit more compact um <coughs> maybe even one of the intersectional peonies which only get to about two foot six high they have a tree peony sort of framework so they're a bit more sturdy in an exposed position and you might find that they hold their flower a bit better there but certainly all of the peonies will be tough enough to survive there the question is going to be the wind yeah and and what sort of daylight do that you know sun do they need if they are north facing and getting very little actual sunlight would that limit the amount of flower you would get yes it certainly will they do need a fair bit of sunlight in the spring to to initiate bud and to flower but if she's got buds um, at the moment she's obviously getting some sunlight obviously um slightly less sunlight means you'll get slightly stronger color um on the flowers if they're scented you'll probably get a slightly stronger scent as well if you can smell it in an exposed um, position. Um, but yeah, they're, 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 they'll be fine there. Okay, so I think it's worth a go, Kathleen. Give it a go. If you don't try, you don't know, do you? So I, I definitely recommend one of the shorter intersectional peonies. Rather okay, than right. Any idea where you might be able to get one of those from, Ali? I don't know. Maybe um, <laughs> primrose called peonies.co.uk. Well done. Good man. <laughs> Jolly good. Right. Um, Delphinium question now. So this is one for you, Mark. This is from uh, Stephen Miles. He would like to know how to prepare the ground uh, to grow a really good display of Delphinium. So what sort of growing conditions do they need? Okay, so basically a delphin wants as much sun as you can give it. Some of the best I ever grew were on an allotment, which was obviously sun all day. Um, they need sun for at least half the day. In terms of them preparing the soil, um, double dig it. They're going to be in there for a long time, so make sure you remove any kind of perennial weeds and incorporate plenty of organic matter. Plant the plant, but you've got to keep it fed and watered. Um, I reckon probably this is true of all plants, actually, is most people don't feed their plants enough. I don't know whether everyone else would agree with that, but <coughs> certainly we're, we're, we're guilty of being a bit tight-fisted with the feed. So probably not Saracenias, Matt, but uh, yeah, Too much food. that's what I would do. And, and what sort of life would a, a delphinium have? I mean, obviously the clump is going to get bigger every year, Mark, but do they have a, a lifespan of, you know, five years or something, and then they sort of go backwards almost? Um. People have come out and they've had the same delphinium for 20 years, but I'd be disappointed if I didn't get five years. Um, the, right. the crown, like with lots of herbaceous plants, tends to, to kind of grow outwards. Um, but I would suggest strongly that people take some cuttings, as we talked about yesterday, um, and refresh their plants as they go. But um, yeah. And the other point to make, actually, at that is, is to seek out some really good quality plants. Uh, Pacific giants are often available in the trade. They tend to be a little bit more of an annual. They were indeed bred as an annual, but look out for some of like the Blackmore and Langdon cultivars, a little bit more expensive, but very much worth the, the extra cost and the effort to get them. Okay, thank you, Mark. Good answer there and some really good questions. And we're gonna do a few more in just a minute.